3 sphere. In mathematics, a 3 sphere, or gloom, is a higher dimensional analog of a sphere. It may be embedded in four dimensional Euclidean space as the set of points equidistant from a fixed central point. Analogously to how the boundary of a ball in three dimensions is an ordinary sphere, the boundary of a ball in four dimensions is a three sphere. A three sphere is an example of a three manifold. In coordinates, a three sphere with center and radius is the set of all points in real, four dimensional space, such that the three sphere centered at the origin with radius 1 is called the unit three sphere and is usually denoted. It is often convenient to regard as the space with two complex dimensions. The unit 3 sphere is then given by or This description as the quaternions of norm 1 identifies the 3 sphere with the versors and the quaternion division ring dot just as the unit circle is important for planar polar coordinates, so the 3 sphere is important in the polar view of 4 space involved in quaternion multiplication. See polar decomposition of a quaternion for details of this development of the 3 sphere. This view of the 3 sphere is the basis for the study of elliptic space as developed by Georges Lemaitre. The three-dimensional cubic hyperarea of a three-sphere of radius is while the four-dimensional quartic hypervolume is. Every non-empty intersection of a three-sphere with a three-dimensional hyperplane is a two-sphere. As a three-sphere moves through a given three-dimensional hyperplane, the intersection starts out as a point, then becomes a growing two-sphere that reaches its maximal size when the hyperplane cuts right through the equator of the three-sphere. Then the two-sphere shrinks again down to a single point as the three-sphere leaves the hyperplane. A three-sphere is a compact, connected, three-dimensional manifold without boundary. It is also simply connected. What this means, in the broad sense, is that any loop, or circular path, on the three-sphere can be continuously shrunk to a point without leaving the three-sphere. The Poincaré conjecture, proved in 2003 by Gregory Perelman, provides that the three-sphere is the only three-dimensional manifold with these properties. The three-sphere is homeomorphic to the one-point compactification of in general, any topological space that is homeomorphic to the three-sphere is called a topological three-sphere. The homology groups of the three-sphere are as follows, and are both infinite cyclic, while for all other indices. Any topological space with these homology groups is known as a homology three-sphere. Initially Poincaré conjectured that all homology three-spheres are homeomorphic to, but then he himself constructed a non-homeomorphic one, now known as the Poincaré homology sphere. Infinitely many homology spheres are now known to exist. For example, a dent filling with slope on any knot in the three-sphere gives a homology sphere, typically these are not homeomorphic to the three-sphere. As to the homotopy groups, we have an is infinite cyclic. The higher homotopy groups, are all finite abelian but otherwise follow no discernible pattern. For more discussion see homotopy groups of spheres. The three-sphere is naturally a smooth manifold, in fact, a closed embedded submanifold of the Euclidean metric on induces a metric on the three-sphere giving its structure of a Riemannian manifold. As with all spheres, the three-sphere has constant positive sectional curvature equal to where is the radius. Much of the interesting geometry of the three-sphere stems from the fact that the three-sphere has a natural Lie group structure given by quaternion multiplication. The only other spheres with such a structure are the zero-sphere and the one-sphere. Unlike the two-sphere, the three-sphere admits non-vanishing vector fields. One can even find three linearly independent and non-vanishing vector fields. These may be taken to be any left invariant vector fields forming a basis for the Lie algebra of the three-sphere. This implies that the three-sphere is parallelizable. It follows that the tangent bundle of the three-sphere is trivial. For a general discussion of the number of linear independent vector fields on a sphere, see the article Vector Fields on Spheres. There is an interesting action of the circle group on giving the three-sphere the structure of a principal circle bundle known as the Hopf bundle. If one thinks of as a subset of, the action is given by the orbit space of this action is homeomorphic to the two-sphere. Since is not homeomorphic to, the Hopf bundle is non-trivial. There are several well-known constructions of the three-sphere. Here we describe gluing a pair of three balls and then the one-point compactification. A three-sphere can be constructed topologically by gluing together the boundaries of a pair of three balls. The boundary of a three-ball is a two-sphere, and these two two-spheres are to be identified. That is, imagine a pair of three balls of the same size, then superpose them so that their two spherical boundaries match, and let matching pairs of points on the pair of two spheres be identically equivalent to each other. In analogy with the case of the two-sphere, the gluing surface is called an equatorial sphere.
there. Note that the interiors of the three balls are not glued to each other. One way to think of the fourth dimension is as a continuous real-valued function of the three-dimensional coordinates of the three ball, perhaps considered to be temperature. We take the temperature to be zero along the gluing two sphere and let one of the three balls be hot and let the other three ball be cold. The hot three ball could be thought of as the upper hemisphere and the cold three ball could be thought of as the lower hemisphere. The temperature is highest slash lowest at the centers of the two three balls. This construction is analogous to a construction of a two sphere, performed by gluing the boundaries of a pair of discs. A disc is a two ball, and the boundary of a disc is a circle. Let a pair of discs be of the same diameter. Superpose them and glue corresponding points in their boundaries. Again one may think of the third dimension as temperature. Likewise, we may inflate the two sphere, moving the pair of discs to become northern and southern hemispheres. After removing a single point from the two sphere, what remains is homeomorphic to the Euclidean plane. In the same way, Removing a single point from the three sphere yields three dimensional space. An extremely useful way to see this is via stereographic projection. We first describe the lower dimensional version. Rest the south pole of the unit two sphere on the plane in three space. We map a point of the sphere to the plane by sending to the intersection off the line with the plane. Stereographic projection of a three sphere maps to three space in the same manner. A somewhat different way to think of the one-point compactification is via the exponential map. Returning to our picture of the unit 2 sphere sitting on the Euclidean plane, consider a geodesic in the plane, based at the origin, and map this to a geodesic in the 2 sphere of the same length, based at the south pole. Under this map all points of the circle of radius are sent to the north pole. Since the open unit disk is homeomorphic to the Euclidean plane, this is again a one-point compactification. The exponential map for three sphere is similarly constructed, it may also be discussed using the fact that the three sphere is the Lie group of unit quaternions. The four Euclidean coordinates for are redundant since they are subject to the condition that, as a three-dimensional manifold one should be able to parameterize a B3 coordinates, just as one can parameterize the two sphere using two coordinates. Due to the non-trivial topology of it is impossible to find a single set of coordinates that cover the entire space. Just as on the two sphere, one must use at least two coordinate charts. Some different choices of coordinates are given below. It is convenient to have some sort of hyperspherical coordinates on an analogy to the usual spherical coordinates on. One such choice, by no means unique, is to use, where we're in run over the range 0 to, and runs over 0 to 2. Note that, for any fixed value of, and parameterize a two sphere of radius, except for the degenerate cases, when equals zero or, in which case they describe a point. The round metric on the three sphere in these coordinates is given by n the volume form by. These coordinates have an elegant description in terms of quaternions. Any unit quaternion can be written as a versa where is a unit imaginary quaternion, that is, a quaternion that satisfies. This is the quaternionic analog of Euler's formula. Now the unit imaginary quaternions all lie on the unit two sphere and so any such can be written within this form. The unit quaternion is given by where as above. When is used to describe spatial rotations, it describes a rotation about through an angle of. For unit radius another choice of hyperspherical coordinates, makes use of the embedding of in. In complex coordinates we write. This could also be expressed in as here runs over the range 0 2, and in can take any values between 0 and 2. These coordinates are useful in the description of the three spheres the Hopf bundle for any fixed value of between 0 and, the coordinates parameterize a two-dimensional torus. Rings of constant and above form simple orthogonal grids on the dory. See image to right. In the degenerate cases, when equals 0 or, these coordinates describe a circle. The round metric on the three sphere in these coordinates is given by n the volume form by. To get the interlocking circles of the Hopf vibration, make a simple substitution in the equations above. In this case, and specify which circle, and specifies the position along each circle. One round trip of or equates to a round trip of the torus in the two respective directions. Another convenient set of coordinates can be obtained via stereographic projection of from a pole onto the corresponding equatorial hyperplane. For example, if we project from the point we can write a point in S where is a vector in AND. In the second equality above, we have identified with a unit quaternion and with a pure quaternion, the inverse of this map takes into. We could just as well have projected from the point, in which case the point is given by where is another vector in. The inverse of this map takes to.
Note that the coordinates are defined everywhere but in the coordinates everywhere but. This defines an atlas on consisting of two coordinate charts or patches, which together cover all of. Note that the transition function between these two charts on their overlap is given by and vice versa. When considered as the set of unit quaternions, inherits an important structure, namely that of quaternionic multiplication. Because the set of unit quaternions is closed under multiplication, takes on the structure of a group. Moreover, since quaternionic multiplication is smooth, can be regarded as a real Lie group. It is a non abelian, compact Lie group of dimension 3. When thought of as a Lie group is often denoted or. It turns out that the only spheres that admit a Lie group structure are, thought of as the set of unit complex numbers, and, the set of unit quaternions. One might think that, the set of unit octonions, would form a Lie group, but this fails since octonion multiplication is non associative. The octonionic structure does give one important property parallelizability. It turns out that the only spheres that are parallelizable are, and by using a matrix representation of the quaternions, one obtains a matrix representation of. One convenient choice is given by the Pauli matrices. This map gives an injective algebra homomorphism from to the set of 2 times 2 complex matrices. It has the property that the absolute value of a quaternion is equal to the square root of the determinant of the matrix image of. The set of unit quaternions is then given by matrices of the above form with unit determinant. This matrix subgroup is precisely the special unitary group. Thus, as a Lie group is isomorphic to. Using our Hopf coordinates we can then write any element of in the form. Another way to state this result is if we express the matrix representation of an element of as a linear combination of the Pauli matrices. It is seen that an arbitrary element can be written as the condition that the determinant of is plus 1 implies that the coefficients are constrained to lie on a 3 sphere. In Edwin Abbott, Abbott's Flatland, published in 1884, and in Sphereland, a 1965 sequel to Flatland by Dionys Berger, the 3 sphere is referred to as an oversphere, and a 4 sphere is referred to as a hypersphere. Writing in the American Journal of Physics, Mark A. Peterson describes three different ways of visualizing three spheres and points out language in the Divine Comedy that suggests Dante viewed the universe in the same way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.